It's hey everyone, thanks for joining us on 10 Tampa Bay Plus. I'm meteorologist Colleen Campbell here in your hurricane headquarters. We appreciate you joining us online. So if you're thinking, man, that escalated fast. Well, yeah, so we are going to talk all about Milton and try to, try to put some uh, stress at ease. I know it's a very uh, stressful time for a lot of us. We are working through this together. We live here just like you do. And of course, we don't want another storm. This is not the news we want to hear, but if we prepare, I think we'll be OK. So here we go. Tropical satellites right now you're looking at uh, the radar and the satellite. A lot of color on here, right? We have some moisture that's flashing our way. That's the initial moisture that we're expecting for tomorrow, turning on the faucet and allowing a couple good pores to move through our area. So that's going to be the initial problem uh, because, of course, a lot of areas are in recovery and cleanup mode. So let's get into uh, the tropics and see what we're working with. So Milton rapidly developed from a tropical depression early this morning to a tropical storm and it was encountering some wind shear and that's why we were thinking yesterday uh, it may not have a shot of developing so fast but this storm pr proved us wrong with that element so Here's the stats right now. Milton is in uh, the southwestern Gulf of Mexico. That moisture that it's working with, it has uh, robust storms that have been firing up. All the green that you see here is the rain that's stemming from it. The brighter, vibrant colors that you're seeing are the cloud tops. A little bit of a basin overview here before we dive deeper into Milton. We also have Kirk that has been downgraded to a Category 3 hurricane. That is having no impact to the states. It's actually going to veer off to the north and to the east. And then we have Leslie that is a Category 1 hurricane. That was a recent update as well. Um, also no impact to us at this time. And then we have this area right here, this tropical wave that's trying to form, but it has a low probability of developing within the next week. So getting back to Milton. Right now the wind speeds are around 40 miles per hour. It's moving northeast at three miles per hour. Pretty sluggish. And uh, it is located uh, just outside of Mexico right now, about 245 miles from that pinpoint that we have placed there. So let's get into the cone. The cone, expect this to change, the cone of uncertainty. You're going to notice it's pretty wide right now, and that's because it's our initial first run. Uh, earlier, we had our first run of the day. So it's our first day that we have the cone of uncertainty. As we get closer and closer, you'll see this cone start to become more narrow as we can narrow down where the system wants to make landfall. So anywhere in the cone is where we could have impacts from Milton. It's just uh, an area where we're expecting that center to cross over. But again, once we get a little bit closer in time here, you will start to see that cone become a little bit more narrow. Uh, but current track has it approaching the west coast of Florida as we move into Tuesday night, Wednesday afternoon. And again, the timing can change on this, of course. And yes, the latest models has it uh, strengthening to a category three, which would be a major hurricane. So definitely something that we don't want to see. But there are little glimmers of hope here, one of them being the wind shear. Now, so so far, the wind shear has not worked in our favor because as we saw today, Milton did strengthen uh, pretty rapidly and quickly moved into uh, that tropical storm status. But as we move into the next few days, all of this blue that you see here, that would be the higher wind shear. And remember, these tropical systems don't like wind shear because they have a problem keeping their structure. Uh, and we have a front that's sinking down, so that's part of the reason why the wind shear is a little bit higher here. Now, this isn't to say that the cone will shift to the south, but it is a possibility. Another possibility is that we could see some weakening with Milton. But the current cone, we have to go with what that's saying, and it looks like it does want to strengthen to that major hurricane status. So we're going to go with that for now and just cross our fingers that uh, things will work in out, out in our favor. I will say that the spaghetti models are also in better agreement today for a first run. That's uh, not too bad where you have spaghetti models that Again, we only have a few outliers that you see there, one that's going up to the north and one that's pretty far south there. But most of these uh, spaghetti plots are bringing it to, towards our area. So we're a few days away from this. We have Monday, Tuesday to prepare. And uh, what you can do is, of course, stock up on those sandbags. Make sure you tarp everything, especially any areas that have been exposed. We're going to go over a couple tips here. But let's talk about uh, the tropical storm force winds. So what you're looking at here is the probability of the timing, and I apologize, that just advanced on me, but I can tell you that come 8 o'clock tonight, we will, or Tuesday night, excuse me, 
we will start to feel the impacts of those tropical storm force winds start to approach our coast. So Tuesday night, 8 p.m. What you're seeing here, the percentages, is the probability, the percentage probability of those tropical force winds entering our region. So a 60% probability of tropical storm force winds, yeah, that's pretty high and uh, not in our favor. So let's get into the moisture because a couple of you had questions about the initial system that's on the way moving into Sunday tomorrow. So we have a lot of moisture that's associated with the area of disturbed weather and that's going to approach our area tomorrow bringing just hefty downpours. And the problem with that is, well, again, a lot of folks are trying to recover and rebuild. Uh, so if we have a significant downpour, especially over those vulnerable areas, well, then that could lead to some flooding issues. And I am going to go over flood watch that we have in place. Here's Milton way back here. So as we advance this and go throughout the week, there's Milton starting to approach our coast. And again, of course, we are expecting this to be a big rainmaker event starting tomorrow and leading into the rest of the week here. We could have five to eight inches of rain even higher in some spots and the biggest impacts as far as wind and yes unfortunately storm surge looks to be right at the center of where Milton will eventually make landfall which again there's some uncertainty with that and south of that so again we really have to pay attention to the cone and any developments that we receive this is just day one we just received the cone for today and there will be some slight little trims and changes that uh, we have to tell you about as we get closer to the system making landfall. This flood watch is in place starting tomorrow morning. It goes until Thursday morning. And what that's basically saying is, again, we are expecting this to be a primary rain event. Unfortunately, it is turning tropical on us with the second wave that's coming, and that's when we have to worry about the storm surge and the wind. But we are a day away from getting any watches or warnings in, uh, pertaining to storm surge. So stay tuned for that. We will update you with that come tomorrow once we receive them on our end. What we can tell you is the timing uh, Sunday late tomorrow is when we will start having those impacts from that heavy rain where we can have some flash flooding. And then as of course we move closer to that landfall time, Tuesday night, Wednesday is when we will start feeling the impacts of those winds. Remember Tuesday 8 p.m. we sh should start having the tropical storm force winds in our region and they can be damaging what you need to do is make sure you're protecting those areas that have been exposed or beat up from uh, Helene. Make sure you're please heeding to all evacuations. I know a couple of folks, uh, you, this is not your first hurricane and probably won't be your last hurricane, but just make sure you listen to those evacuations when they're put in place or put in place in order uh, for a good reason. And we want you safe. So even if it's moving a couple miles inland, that's all it takes. Just get away from that evacuation zone if you're in that. Um, and again, make sure you have a way to receive alerts. The 10 Tampa Bay app is absolutely free. You can also use social media. If you ever have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out to us and um, make sure you have a weather radio. That's another great resource resource, um, especially if you are in an area that couldn't be impacted, some power lines down and you may not have electricity, right? Some people still don't have electricity, unfortunately, since Helene. Helene was just a week ago uh, and more. So, all right, uh, that is your weather impact alert. We're going to have the latest update coming up here at 11 o'clock, but we just wanted to breeze through this, tell you what we, the information that we've received today. And again, we're here with you to walk through this every step of the way, and we want you to be prepared, and we're building back with you. So please uh, check in with the latest alerts, and if you have any questions, again, don't hesitate to reach out.